Hello and welcome viewers to the ATF Intergalactic Athletic Contest. We are so happy to have you viewing and hearing us throughout the galaxy as we bring you what is turning out to be an incredible display of athletics. My name is Zilkar of Milak and I will be the primary host of today's festivities. With me is my esteemed colleague Rilo of Pachecho 5 who is aching to talk about the upcoming games. And that's right Zilkar. In this cycle's contest we have a brand new species joining the contest the species known as humans from their home planet of Earth. Now, as some of you may be aware, each contest is to show the best athletic prowess of each species. Some contests, like the distance contest, are always won by their associated species, but within each contest, each species is trying to best the previous record set by their predecessors. If one species outdoes a previous record holder, it will be adjusted accordingly in the Galactic Senate scientific archives. And this year will be interesting. Humans so far haven't been documented yet in their athletics against other species, so this will show us exactly what they can do. Now, with all that out of the way, let's get into the action with our first contest, the Distance Contest. This was by no means Ground's first contest. On his home planet, he had participated in hundreds of them, all in preparation for this moment. He was the best Tolwikian in Distance, and for the past 79 contests, this was what his species dominated at. His back legs were a massive muscle, ready to propel him forward, and his arms were able to make quick adjustments if needed. His tail wagged slightly behind him, as he waited to be called up to the starting position, as if it knew it was time to start working. Grind decided to quickly stretch while waiting in the starting auditorium, and went forward as he briefly went quadrupedal, arcing his back. He preferred his natural stance, unlike the rest of his kind, who deemed it only necessary for running. Sure, a Torwikian's body could stay bipedal forever, but that didn't mean they needed to. As far as Graham was concerned, nature was nature, and if they had evolved to be both, then he should do as nature had intended. Suddenly, Graham heard the sound of footsteps approach him, and he turned his head to see uh, Milakian slowly shuffling his way. They were the second best distance species in the galaxy, and that was only because instead of running like the rest, they hopped with their massive back legs. Graham stood up to meet his eyes as it approached. Greetings. Greetings. You must be Graham, right? I'm Frojack. The Milikian bowed his head as was customary, and Grian followed suit. I assume you heard about the news? About the humans. Grian can help but let out a low growl, his species version of a chuckle. Yeah, I don't really know what to make of them. I don't think they're going to be much competition. How are you going to be able to run fast with those small legs? Frojack chittered his teeth, laughing. Seriously, I kind of want to slow down just enough to see when it stops moving. So, pretty soon after the starting whistle. Suddenly, the sound of a horn came over the speakers, signifying the athletes to get into position. All 100 species line up to exit the auditorium, with Grian and Frojack at the front, showing their first and second species rank. The doors in front of them opened, and the sound of cheers and roars entered the room as the athletes slowly walked out into the stadium. The bright light of the day momentarily blinded Grion, and as his eyes adjusted, he saw the open plane in front of them, with a starting line clearly marked for each species to begin. Grian led the procession with confidence, and as he looked into the stands, he saw his species roaring the loudest, waving his player's flag, as he held up right paw in a sign of unity. He saw other species in the stadium, but altogether, his species easily outnumbered all of them. At least until he saw the humans. His species were certainly larger than them, but they somehow took up the same area of the stadium as his, and were almost as loud. For a moment, he was almost put off by it, but he knew that they could never beat his species in this event. Each one of them would go home with sore throats, and acknowledge that they were hardly equal to the great Tolwikians. As Grand approached his place, he looked to his left and saw that the humans would be competing right next to him. Good, he thought. I get a chance to put this one in their place myself. As he waited for the rest of the species to get into place, he leaned over to Frojack to his right. Want to make a fun deal? Frojack put his ear up. I'm listening. However far the human gets, that's how much Hylurian ale we have to drink tonight. Frodo chittered his teeth again in laughter. That doesn't sound like much to me, but sure, deal. Just as they bowed their heads in acknowledgement, the human walked up to his place next to Grion. Now this one certainly can't be their best, Grion thought, looking at the creature. It was pretty thin, with barely any fur on it, except for on his head. And while its legs suddenly looked bulky proportionally, it didn't even have a tail to correct its course if it needed to change direction. Grion always kept staring until the human looked up to him and whistled. You sure are a big fella, aren't you? It said and Grian tweaked his head, unsure as to what fella meant. Did his internal translator malfunction? I am no ferrer, 
he tried to say, though his tongue couldn't find the right place in his mouth. I am Gryon of Tolwak. The human's face briefly went red, and it scratched the back of his head. His long brown fur was held back by some fabric, and for a moment Gryon thought it saw some blue fur. Oh yes, the info rules on humans mentioned some dyed their hair for aesthetic purposes. Strange. Sorry, I'm still a little new to this whole thing. I'm Julie. It's a pleasure to meet you, Gryon. I hope we can have a good race. It bared its teeth towards Gryon, and for a moment Gryon wasn't sure whether it was a show of happiness like he had learned, or a sign of dominance. His thought process was broken, as the announcer came over the speakers. Attention athletes! As a reminder, this contest is purely about endurance. At the sound of the whistle, you are to commence running for as long as you can. There is no time limit, and wherever you stop moving will be marked as your species distance. Now, athletes, take your mark. Gryon bent down, and entered what he liked to call his pounce position. He looked to his right and saw Frojack in an odd pose, but Gryon knew it was key for the Maliks to get a good start. Gryon looked to his left momentarily to see what the human would be in, but surprised to see it had entered an almost quadrupedal stance like himself. Are they actually quadrupeds? He thought, but he snapped himself out of it and focused on the field ahead. He always wanted a ways just to see how the human ran, but he knew that any sign of delay would be taken as a sign of weakness from his fellow Tawikians. He waited patiently for the starting command. Tweet! Gryon bounded forward, and within seconds he had already left his fellow competitors behind. Frojack may be second best, but Tolwikians were nothing if not fast, and Gryon was the fastest of them all. The landscape raced by him as time seemed to slow down and speed up simultaneously, and by the time his muscles were sending him the message to slow down, the sound of the stadium was already a distant memory. He panted, trying his best to regulate his body temperature, knowing the previous record of 40 kilometers would be illuminated ahead of him in time. Finally, he saw the hologram light up in the distance, and he forced his muscles into overdrive, until finally he burst through the hologram in a blaze of fur and thunder. He kept running for a few more strides before finally coming to a stop. He lay down in the grass to help cool himself off, and an automated drone soon hovered above him and sprayed a mist of cold water on him. Congratulations, Gryron, on setting a new record of 43 kilometers, it said, planting a small flag next to him. 43, he thought. Beat that, human. He chuckled in his low growl for a moment as he slowly got up and looked back, wondering where Frojok was at this point. The furthest Emelikian has ever gotten was three kilometers, so Gryon doubted he would see any competitors from here on out. However, it was a matter of sportsmanship to wait until all species were stopped before Gryon would be picked up, and that usually took a good couple of hours. So he decided to lay back down until the drone signaled it was time to leave. And so Gryon waited. And waited. And waited. Eventually, Gryon started to get annoyed. It normally never took this long for all the competitors to finish. Was this drone broken? Or maybe it had signaled the end and Gryon had missed it. He stood up to check the drone, but the sound of shuffling fabric put his ears up. Gryon turned his head, and what he saw almost knocked him back down. Running up to him was the human. Sure, it wasn't running fast, but it also didn't seem to be tired at all. It wasn't even breathing that badly, just a steady rhythm that matched his pace. Gryon couldn't help but stare wide-eyed as it ran up to him, smiled as if everything was fine, waved one of its appendages at him, and then continued running, having never slowed down. Gryon quickly looked at the drone. Drone? How long has it been since the start of the contest? Six hours and fifteen minutes. Six hours? Gryon looked back at Julie the human, as she slowly faded into the distance. I hope they stop soon. Gru steadied itself next to the wall, as it watched the contest in front of it. It didn't feel worried as a Tawikian walked up to the pitch and prepared to throw the small sphere. The sphere throw was a Jeknalian speciality, and Gru was one of the best. Sure, it had placed second in the finals back on Jeknal, but an unfortunate accident had left first place in a bad coma, and Gru had been offered the position of representing his species in their famed contest. The Tawikian tried its best to grasp onto the sphere, but Gru knew its oversized paws couldn't get the right grip around it. It tried its best to throw the first sphere, but it landed only a couple of meters away. Gru warbled to itself as it watched the second sphere go hurtling the other direction. While distance was somewhat key, accuracy was the big game here, and Jack Knowles excelled at that. Gru watched as Satowe got frustrated and forfeited, allowing the contest to continue without too much of an embarrassment. Not that Gru minded. It enjoyed watching the contest. It wasn't too difficult to understand. The creatures would start by throwing the spheres at a half meter wide target one meter away, and for every five spheres, the target would move away by one meter. The farthest any species had gotten was five meters, but that had been the previous contest by a jacknal, who had, some would say miraculously, 
scored one sphere in the target. Once the species have missed all five spheres, the scores will be added up, with the amount of spheres in each distance multiplied by said distance, giving the species its throwing score. Tolwikians never got past a score of three, but to be fair, they were built for distance, not throwing. Crew knew that, and reminded itself that the best check now score had been 33 the previous year. That wasn't a tough score to beat, as Gru had practiced and gone to the 35 back home, but now that the contest was here, Gru was starting to get anxious. It wrapped a tentacle around itself, and thought back to how it had spiked the potty juice with a neurotoxin before handing it to the first place winner back in Jeknull. Maybe it should have waited until the next contest, gotten a little more practice. The next athlete is Gru from Jeknull, the announcer declared over the intercom, and the sound of warbling above it spurred Gru to move forward. Representatives of its spawning group had come to watch, and the last thing it wanted to do was let them down. It shuffled forward on its tentacles, grasping the rungs provided to bring it out to the field. It turned back to the crowd, and saw its brethren all waving their tentacles in a hypnotic fashion, signifying their support. Gru turned back to the pitch, as the first target hovered in front of it, one metre away. Five spheres flowed into a basin in front of it, and it picked one up in its tentacle. The sphere wasn't too heavy, maybe 200 grams, but it still was hefty in the soft body of a Genaglion. Gru twirled his tentacle and flung the sphere towards the target, easily getting it in. Just relax. Imagine it's just training back home, it thought to itself, as it made the next four spheres in the target. A buzzer sounded, and the target hovered back one metre, before five more spheres appeared. Gru warbled to itself as the next ten spheres went into the target, but it knew that four metres would be a lot harder to make. Even the last sphere at three metres barely made it in, a little bit to the left and it would have missed. Gru steadied itself as the target adjusted, and the next spheres appeared. It grasped the first one and chugged the sphere, almost not wanting to watch. It went into the target, and Gru started to feel better. It grabbed the next sphere and threw it, but watched as the sphere went wide to the left. It steadied itself and grabbed the next sphere. Miss. It's okay. Miss. Gru still had one left. Miss. Okay, maybe Gru should have waited another 20 cycles for the next games. That was nothing for Geneclians, since they aged slowly. Gru started to feel nervous as the target buzzed moved back one more meter. If Gru missed all of these targets, it would still have the most points ever scored by a species of 34, and could go home a winner. But I didn't poison my rival for four meters, just one more. Gru thought to itself, as it grabbed a sphere and prepared to chuck it. Miss. 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 Gru started to get angry at itself as it grabbed the last sphere. It needed to make this one, and it needed to not look like a miracle. Gru steadied itself and twirled its tentacle, imagining the ball going right into the centre of the target. Finally, it let go. Bzzz. Gru couldn't believe it. The sphere had gone right into the target with absolute certainty, dead centre. It wobbled loudly with glee, and his fellow brethren behind it joined in the sound of victory as the target moved back one more meter. Gru didn't care though. It didn't even try to hit the target, letting the spheres bounce on the ground in glee as the announcer declared a new record of 39, set by Gru of Jeknull. That's all Gru wanted to hear as it swung back to the waiting area. However, it stopped as it saw an odd creature approaching. Gru had never seen something like it before, as it walked on two legs towards the pitch. The creature looked at Gru with an odd look and mumbled something about space octopi before continuing towards the pitch. Gru thought about leaving, but something about this creature seemed weirdly threatening. He went back to his position on the wall where he had watched the Tawikian, and waited as the creature stopped at the pitch. Next up is Howard, representing the human species from Earth, the announcer declared, and Gru remembered something about how there were a new species in the Galactic Senate. Now, Howard, do you need a refresher on the rules? Duh, Howard said, picking up on the spheres. I play professional baseball back home, so this will be easy. It bounced a sphere in its appendage, easily gripping it and Gru suddenly realised that it had never seen a species do that so dexterously before. Alright then, whenever you're ready then, the announcer said, and the target floated one metre in front of the human. Bzzz, 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 bzzz. Gru couldn't believe what it was seeing. The human had put each sphere dead centre into the target so far, and hadn't shown any signs of wavering. As the target moved to the five metre mark, the announcer declared that the human had already blazed past Gru's record to 50 points. Gru can have a wonder at this point, how much farther Howard could throw. Well, today has been quite a day, hasn't it, Relo? Indeed it has, Ziklar. For those just tuning in, our first two events have been absolutely smashed by the new humans. 
Howard of Earth has set a brand new record of 275 points in the throwing contest, and according to him, he could have gone further had the target not maxed out his distance of 10 metres. You heard that right, he was able to hit not one, but every single throw at 10 metres. With ease. Quite right, Relo. And if you're wondering why the jumping contest hasn't started yet, that's because my fellow Machian, Frojack, is still stuck in the distance contest, waiting on Julia Verf to stop running. She still hasn't stopped in 12 hours. How far has she gotten to at this point, Relo? She's already doubled the new record set by Gryalon or Tolwak, and she doesn't seem to be slowing down. In an earlier interview with us, she did say that one of her ancestors apparently ran for 500 kilometers in one go once. We thought she was joking before, but now, I'm not so sure. Neither am I, and I doubt anybody watching is either. We are going to sign off for now, but be sure to tune in next time to see whether these humans can keep on astounding us and setting brand new records.